الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. Last time we have started the first session on inward and outward transformation. And my approach is we go through the revelation and see that transformative power in the revelation. And this happened during Mecca and Medina uh, period. It's not an easy task, but inshallah ta'ala, I'm trying. So last time we covered mainly five points, and these are very crucial and very important to keep in mind. Inshallah, we'll elaborate on these five points uh, more as well. So I went through the Quran and I tried my best to see the stories of the prophets and the stories of the messengers with their nations, with their people. And I thought, why do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send in the first place uh, messengers and prophets? And the simple answer is when corruption happened, <clears throat> then people needs they need to come back to reformation so they need reformation Allah will send the messengers and the prophets to reform the community to bring it back to the principles and to bring it back to justice and so on so we've seen this since Adam alayhi salam with his children. We've seen this from Nuh and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa and Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. So if we were to look closely to these stories, we always find a corrupt society, city, people and they have been sent a messenger or a prophet and we see across the board the struggle and the retaliation and the resilience against any change in the community based on uh, we are fine with this Of course, those who are fine, definitely the, the people in power and people in authority, they are fine with it because like Pharaoh, like others, they have took the advantage of everyone to their interest and they have uh, utilized the power of the society to serve them, not to serve the society and so on. We see this as a common uh, factor in all nations. So be it uh, Fir'aun or be it uh, Quraysh or during uh, Isa's time or during uh, any prophet in general or Yunus or uh, the wood or you name it so we do find this uh, a common thing that when we have corruption Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send somebody uh, to change this corruption so the core of any change usually is is about reformation and this is what we've seen in in one verse uh, in the story of Shu'aib the only mission which I want to, to do for you is to reform to the best of my ability so he made it clear that he wants to reform the community, the society, the rules which they are following and going back to the final message and the final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see this as well 
in his struggle against Quraysh, against the society, against the people at that time. Well, we still have the same thing, actually. People are not easy to change. And this is why uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentioned uh, <coughs> twice the word change. ذلك بأن الله لم يكن مغيرا نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم. So Allah will never change or withdraw a favor that He had bestowed upon a people unless they change what within themselves. This is the first ayah. The second ayah Allah سبحانه وتعالى says إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم Allah will never change uh, the condition of a people until they change what within themselves. So these are the main two verses in the Quran which uh, talks about uh, change. So yes, a change from corruption to reformation change from injustice to justice, change from uh, humiliation for the human race to respect for the human race, and no equality to equality, and so on. So we see these are the main principles which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with all messengers, with all prophets. No prophet or messenger was sent to humiliate humankind, never. No messenger or prophet has been sent to uh, spread injustice, never. No prophet or messenger has been sent to uh, promote uh, fahsha or indecency or bad character, never. So we see these are the common things. So when the society goes beyond the limits, and this is what we say uh, in Arabic, taga, tughiyan, and taghut. So they go beyond the limits. Allah will send somebody to reform them, to deliver the message to them. And sometimes because uh, they refuse, they did not accept any change, then Allah will punish them all, those who refused mainly and save those who are trying their best to change their society. And we've seen this across the Quran. So this is the, the story which uh, we, we can learn from the Quran that reformation takes, number one, uh, sincerity. Number two, takes time, without doubt. Uh, it needs plenty of sabr and it needs clarity what do you want to change and how do you want to change and the plan plan for that change and we've seen this uh, in uh, his approach alayhi salatu wassalam in mecca so going back to last week's uh, points which we mentioned that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the very first five uh, Revelation from Surat Iqra first, and then Surat Al Qalam second, and Surat Al Muzammil, and then Al Mudassir, and then Al Fatiha, and then the sequence went on and on. So, 114 surahs. So, we are just covering it in this uh, session these five almost, and we'll add more inshallah to it. So we've seen here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this transformation and this is the core of the transformation. Transformation from ignorance to knowledge, Iqra. Uh, the ayah Iqra and the surah is about Iqra. And this is where as well the core of uh, knowledge about Allah Azza wa Jal first and monotheism and tawheed and aqeedah and worship and uh, having good connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So purifi purification of the mind, purification of the heart 
from uh, any delusion or any illusion or any uh, fake uh, inherited information. So Islam came with, with knowledge and uh, facts. So you worship Allah, your uh, ibadah has to be based on, on knowledge and uh, deep understanding. You can't worship Allah with no knowledge, with no understanding. You can't. So we see this transformation from people just uh, doing tawaf around uh, idols and worshipping idols, creating their idols and then uh, worshipping them or doing their idols from dates and when they are hungry they will eat them. This nonsense to common sense. So this is what transformation is about. To get to the common sense. When we lose common sense, then we need to do change. We need transformation. We need to make uh, a review to our uh, way of life when we lost uh, common sense. And this is what we see actually now uh, in this lockdown. Uh, people before that, many of us probably, if not all of us, may Allah forgive us, we lost the common sense. So we, we just are very engaged in dunya and very busy with the dunya and uh, uh, enveloped with dunya and consumerism and uh, the, the wants over the needs and the needs to be neglected over the prestige and these kind of things. So people lost common sense. So hopefully this lockdown will bring common sense to people and this is how can we change ourselves change our families, our communities. And people give much attention to footballers more than anyone else, for instance, and pay much for the footballers more than anyone else. <clears throat> Don't misunderstand me. I'm not with or against the footballers. But it's just an example. And the, the frontliners, the, the, the doctors, nurses, and no one cares about them. And we see, we lost common sense. Those who save lives, they should be in the forefront in, in, in everything. But teachers and, and uh, now families do appreciate more the teachers, the role of the teachers, which they give them peanuts. Yes, similarly, the, the nurses, similarly, some doctors and so on. So this is the core of the society. So you need to look after them in order to look after you. So when the society lose common sense, Allah sends signs to transform the community, the society, to bring it back to common sense. And as well, the second point, which we discussed last time was about uh, the character, the importance of character. Yes, without doubt. <clears throat> We've seen the, uh, good character and bad character, the effect of the good character and the bad character is huge in order to deliver any message. We've seen some, some uh, leaders in position with bad character. They cannot deliver a good message because they have bad character. People will not take them seriously. So you need to have the, the right character. The, character which makes people uh, easily engage with you. Uh, you are easily uh, can engage with people and they can easily engage with you. And this is what we call in Arabic uh, lean. Lean which is uh, leniency and ease in your character. We've seen as well, uh, last time we talked about the spiritual uh, transformation, spiritual transformation, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, finding Allah, knowing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as well, the uh, horizontal dimension, 
which is communicating with people and so on. We'll see this more in Medina as well, which I'll, I'll talk about later, inshallah. So in, in Mecca, and the last thing in Mecca, we've seen uh, the change for the mentality, the optimism, the gratitude, rather than uh, being very pessimistic person, being very grumpy, very uh, angry person. So it's changing the mood because you can't do change. Uh, you can't change yourself. If you are very angry, if you are very angry, then ungrateful, uh, you can't see anything beyond your nose, then there's no point to do anything. You keep moaning and you keep uh, complaining and, and this is exactly what was the scenario for that community. So Allah wants to change the mood, wants to change the mentality and tell them, no, there's something uh, you can you can do. No matter how weak you are, you can always do something to change your uh, situation. But you need to have trust in Allah first. You need to know that I can do something. And this is why the Prophet وسلم, in many occasions and different narrations, he said, المؤمن القوي أحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف. The strong believer is more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. وفي كل خير. And in both the weak and and the strong. وفي كل خير. There is goodness in both. <coughs> but the strong, not necessarily by the way, the strong, i.e. the one who has the muscles. Although we need the, the one with muscles sometimes. When when uh, we need muscles, uh, but the strength here is is about internal strength and external strength. So, and then the Prophet Sallallahu in that very hadith he says, "Istain billahi wala ta'jal." So seek support and help from Allah and don't be hasty. Don't be hasty. So it means there's a way, always if you have a will. And Allah will find you an exit, but you need to have sabr. Don't be hasty. It means you have to have sabr. Yes. So to, to plant the seeds in, in the hearts, in the minds, then you can see the growth of the community. You can see the change in the community, but without this, and this is what we should be doing with ourselves, with our children, with our community, to plant the seed of change. We cannot change uh, ourselves, let alone the community, overnight. We can't do that. So we need to start from somewhere where we can really do difference, a difference in, in, in our uh, own selves. And this is the right time, I believe. Ramadan is the right time to make this difference and start somewhere, inshallah ta'ala. So in, in the atmosphere of Mecca, again, I want you to see the Meccan uh, period. In that atmosphere of uh, idol worshippers, uh, kufr, shirik, uh, all these kind of things, which top level of haram and disapproval from Allah Azza wa Jal. As well, you have oppression, you have disrespect to human kind and you have slavery, you have oppression for the women, for the orphans, for the children, for you name it, all sorts of things. Of course, they used to have good things as well to be balanced and honest, not to just paint a picture of doom and gloom. They used to have good things as well, be generous to the guests and they are so uh, uh, honest in their dealings and they have, uh, good character in general uh, and so on so in that atmosphere he's been sent وسلم, to complete and perfect the good character i have been sent to perfect the good character so it means they used to have a good character but it needs rectification it needs uh, to be complemented and and uh, 
perfected from Sharia. With an atmosphere of, as well, uh, airy fairy stuff, believing in magic, believing in this, believing in that, and uh, fake stories and fake traditions. And so Islam wants to bring back sanity, to bring back a scientific approach, to bring back facts rather than uh, fake things. So all of this has been introduced by the Prophet وسلم, through the revelation alayhi salatu wasalam. So I'm elaborating on this because I want you to see how uh, dark was the, the picture and the challenges which he was faced with alayhi salatu wasalam. But without doubt he never gave up. He was so enthusiastic sallallahu alayhi wasalam, so adamant. So 13 years in Mecca he spent uh, striving and struggling and trying his best to penetrate this brick wall. No, he couldn't. He couldn't, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why he is being commanded to leave. He is being given the permission to leave to Medina, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in Mecca, if you want to reflect on the Meccan period in general, of course, not in details. It was all about, uh, when you read the revelation, the Mecca revelation, the revelation which was revealed in Mecca for 13 years, the main uh, revelation was focused on uh, establishing Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, establishing sanity in, in the way of thinking, yes? Uh, that how come you worship your idols you, which you created? How come you do this? How come you do that? And who created you in the first place? Look at the sky, look at the universe, look at the stars, look at uh, camel, look at uh, earth, look at, and so on. So the Quran is establishing the common sense and reviving the, the mind from being buried under the sand of the desert and not being used from many people for so many long years. Uh, so bringing back the, the aql into uh, activation, if you want. So think, don't just follow the traditions. So this was the biggest hurdle. People are following traditions. And again, we, we have the same thing today. People are following traditions and not uh, following common sense, to be honest. So this was in general, the, the revelation in Mecca is about establishing Tawheed of Allah, monotheism, aqeedah, and, and if we want to do any transformation, we need to have strong belief in Allah Azza wa Jal and strong Iman in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in order to make difference. Otherwise, we will be very easily broken and with any challenge, with any fight with ourselves, with our nafs, with desires or temptations. So we need to have solid uh, pillars to build on them. And the solid pillars has to be uh, aqeedah. Aqeedah, i.e. our uh, knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his attributes, his beautiful names, and his uh, uh, actions, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his destiny, and so on. So how, how do we deal with this? So the Prophet وسلم, taught the companions through these uh, revelations and the verses which he received how to get out of this dilemma of, of uh, ignorance and dilemma of uh, jahiliya to start a new life uh, based on the revelation rather than traditions and culture. So this is very crucial point for any change to happen has to be based on solid ground. And the solid ground is the revelation. And then uh, we've seen as well, uh, uh, the principle of Adam. We have honored the children of Adam. So all people are equal. 
the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith which been narrated in different uh, books of the Sunnah and we have some uh, variations in the narration but in general these narrations are around one thing that, that all people are uh, from Adam, the children of Adam, i.e. they are equal. So there is no privilege for an Arab over non-Arab or for white over non-white or uh, and so on. So bringing this into uh, the equation that all people are equal, it's not about your background, it's not about your tribe, it's not about uh, your society is not about your community it's about what you are in akramakum indallahi atqakum the most honorable of you is the one who's with most taqwa that's that's the way people can be privileged with taqwa and when they have taqwa they don't consider a privilege actually. They, they consider humility rather than yeah, showing off, I'm better than him, I have better taqwa. No. The more taqwa you have, the more humility you will uh, practice, inshallah. So he brought this uh, as transformation to them. So no matter how many uh, uh, degrees we have, no matter how many uh, connections we have, if we are not humble, it will not benefit us anything. So humility, I've received a phone call today actually. Uh, long story, but cut the long story short. Uh, a friend he was telling me i know somebody he's, he's my childhood friend and uh, i've knew him since many years and we are always together etc he's a non-muslim but he's a good guy we we uh, uh, do things together and uh, he's he's my close friend but, but the, the last couple of years he got uh, black belt and since that time he started acting with arrogance looking down at others speaking with them in a very different tone and this and that and he said I don't know what to do with him and I'm afraid that I'm going to lose him because uh, yeah, I myself can't tolerate him anymore he's just so arrogant so yeah you need to tell him you need to tell him that arrogance is not the way forward. People will not uh, respect you for being arrogant. You need to be a person of humility. And I said, I said to him, give him some examples, even from non-Muslims. Great leaders are those who are humble, like Nelson Mandela, like, uh, you know, uh, similar to, to this. Uh, the, the humble people, people like humility and hate arrogance and hate arrogant people. So again, Prophet Sallallahu worked on these qualities in them. And uh, it was difficult. It was as you are penetrating the rock. So, but with his sabr Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw the fruits in his lifetime, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. So the respect for, uh, humankind, uh, the importance of freedom, the importance of justice, confirming the importance of justice, not because you have a noble family, you can do whatever you want. No, you will be brought to justice, even if you are from a noble family, doesn't matter. Uh, respect for intellect. So, some leaders don't respect uh, our intellect. Uh, like some of them, he said, in order to fight uh, Corona, drink uh, some uh, antiseptic or anti, uh, like Tetons or something, it will kill the virus. Some people did drink it and uh, went to hospital. Now respect the human intellect, what's that? 
uh, as well, uh, when we talk about uh, character, truthfulness on the top, you talk about trustworthiness, you talk about uh, a man, trust. So you talk about uh, these qualities which you can't live without. Yes. And it's not all good news, of course, although it might be. Uh, you will face, without doubt, uh, calamities and tests and so on. So how to deal with this? So you see that, that the principle or the uh, article of Iman uh, in destiny. How do we deal with destiny? You see Arab before Islam and Arab after Islam. You see how do they use to deal with, with death? Al Khansa, for instance. So you read, read her biography, Al Khansa. Before Islam, she's one of the top poets among Arabs. She has, wow, plenty of good top uh, poems. Uh, So see her, her uh, and read her poems before Islam and after Islam. You see complete transformation. So she was mourning uh, before Islam on the loss of her brother and her uh, uh, probably husband and so on. After Islam, she was a completely different person. And this change for internal change, how to deal with destiny, how to accept destiny, how to, to deal with Allah Azza wa Jal and accept what he sent to you. You see the real transformation happen. But this can't happen without efforts. So they have to have efforts. They have to have a belief that they can do something. And this is what the Quran uh, encourage people to to do. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he went to Medina, if we, we were to talk about in, uh, what happened in Medina, after the establishment of Aqidah and oneness and monotheism and so on in, in Mecca, and it started as well the beginning of Salah towards the end of the Meccan period, uh, almost two years before migration. Salah started uh, as proper after the incident uh, of Al-Mi'raj, there were no sort of uh, rulings as such. It was mainly about principles and uh, belief and so on. In Medina, we see something else. The Prophet Wasallam. When he arrived Medina, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wanted to build a community. Now you have no obstacles to a certain extent. He tried his best to remove the obstacles by doing uh, uh, allies and treaties with different tribes in, in, inside, outside Medina to, to keep peace and to keep things under control in order to establish a community and, and build a society. So in his first speech, alayhi salatu wassalam, he was addressing people by saying, ayyuhan nas, a uh, different variation of uh, narrations, ayyuhan nas, u'abudur rahman, worship ar-Rahman. In some other narration, it says as well, addition to this, uh, afshu salam, spread salam among you. So the narrator of this uh, narration was Abdullah bin Salam, one of the Jewish rabbis who accepted Islam. So Afshu Salam, spread Salam. So this is a symbol of good relationship. How can we establish good relationship with each other? It starts with simple things, with Salam. Especially these days, you, you can't even have uh, uh, to shake hand or, or hug or whatever. Uh, barely you can say salam from a distance. So spread salam, afshu salam, 
واطعموا الطعام لوك افتر ذا نيد امونج يو وصلوا الارحام كونكت يور بلاد تايز وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام براي ديورين ذا نايت وايز بيبول ار سليبينج ذن ذا ريزلت اوف ذيس تدخلوا جنه ربكم بسلام يو ويل بي ادتد تو جنه اوف يور لورد بيسفلي So when you talk about these uh, pillars which he talked about in his opening speech in Medina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, establishing the, the pillars of the community. In Mecca, it wasn't about a community. It was about uh, mentality and uh, uh, common sense and aqeedah and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the core of any change. And here, yes, you have the foundation. Here, you can build on the foundation. Building on the foundation, yes, uh, greet one another. This is the internal change. Internal change because in order to uh, uh, practice your Iman, you have to have actions. Yes? لَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَن تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا You won't be admitted as in the hadith. You won't be admitted to Jannah until uh, you believe. And you won't believe until you love one another. This is how he stated it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُ مُتَحَابَبْتُمْ Shall I not tell you about something? If you were to do, this will foster love among you. أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ تَحَابُوا Spread salam among you. This will foster love. Simple, but very deep. So this is internal, because you have issues in your heart against somebody. I don't want to greet him. No, you need to work on yourself, and you need to overcome these hurdles and rectify this. Afshu salam. So greet him, greet her, with a smile on your face, not with a frown on your face. Yes, uh, as in the hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Uh, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طلق تنط بلتل any of the good deeds which you do even if you were to meet your brother with a smile on your face this is one of the good deeds so yes he emphasized the importance of spreading salam صلى الله عليه وسلم so spread salam and spreading salam is about uh, internal change we see the salam is some something simple and easy yes yes but it's it's very important because it reflects the good connection or bad connection with people so if everyone's saying salam with a smile on their face which we can't see in london actually anyway let alone the lockdown before that and the more you go up north the more you can see smiley faces the more you come down south in london um, you don't have that but anyway so spreading salam is is one of the uh, crucial indications about good relationship so in order to establish good relationship the number one he mentioned this and then the second thing he said literally it means feed the food which we need as well we have food banks uh, since story came into place anyway so it feed the food it means look after the needy among you again it's internal change internal change uh, the softness of the heart uh, it's about uh, not me myself and i it's about going from your inner circle to the community it's breaking through it's going through uh, uh, the, the change from yourself uh, to your community. So you are not self-focused and self-centered anymore. You look after yourself, definitely, but it's not all about us or, or me as, as an individual. As well, it's about community as well. So we need to look after each other. So it's very easy to love yourself. It's by default, we love ourselves, but in order to do any change, any difference, we need to start loving others. لا يؤمن أحدكم in the hadith Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. حتى 
يحب للناس ما يحب لنفسه. None of you believe until he loves for people what he loves for himself. I know many of us are familiar with the other narration which says until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. But I deliberately chosen the other narration which many of us are not familiar with, which is an authentic narration in Muslim Imam Ahmad and Bayhaqi and others. <clears throat> so the Prophet وسلم, is emphasizing the importance of getting out this uh, egoistic circle to the uh, community circle. And to see the emphasis on this in the Fatiha, which we read, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ it's the plural form. We see this, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone, we worship. From you alone, we seek help. Guide us, and so on. So we see the community spirit, it's embedded in our daily prayers that we need to support one another. This is not easy. So this is why it's been embedded in the Salah. <clears throat> so we keep repeating this to be familiar with it and then to practice it. So uh, none of you believes un until he loves for people what he loves for himself from goodness. And another narration, Prophet Sallallahu said, you will not attain the highest level of Iman. And I love this narration, which is in uh, <clears throat> Sahih ibn Hibban. Uh, you will not attain the highest level of Iman until you love for people what you love for yourself. So he considered serving, serving people, yes, looking after them is, is part of the highest rank of Iman. And this is what we see now, for instance, the frontliners bless them and may Allah protect them, protect all of us. Uh, they are saving lives and serving the community and so on. So it's a noble, a rewarding uh, mission. So the Prophet Sallallahu as well, in, in, in Medina, we can see he established Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the foundation of any human society and any uh, change uh, should happen, should go through these uh, pillars which he uh, established sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the inner one which is loving for others what you love for yourself I know some of you might say yeah it's easy we know that yeah but put this into practice it will not be easy every time you put it into practice of course without uh, neglecting yourself yeah, because some people might just be into the people and neglecting themselves. No, you should look after yourself and looking, uh, you should look after others as well. So, أَطْعِمُ uh, الطَّعَامُ It's an indication, not just literal uh, meaning to feed the food here. Yeah? It's an indication to look after those who need your support in the community. Not just financial support, it might be a social support, it might be a spiritual support, it might be educational support, whatever. Whatever support they need, if you can uh, support, then you have to, to do that. And whilst we are doing this, in fact, this is changing our in. Uh, inward or internal reality because we are not self-centered anymore we are thinking about others as well we are looking after others which is exactly what the sharia wants us to do not to be locked down in yourself and do nothing but to fulfill your needs and desires and what have you no there's a whole world out outside you you have to go out and see and, and be part of it. And then he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, the connection of the blood ties. Again, internal, external. Internal here, who has no issues with his relatives? Who has a very peaceful relationship with every single member of all his family and extended family? 
I tell you, no one. We always have this. So it's, it's, a, it's a common thing. Uh, who has, um, among all his friends, uh, all of them are good? No one. Definitely, you have. Uh, this is the nature of uh, humans. We have this and that. So, because it's it's crucial to any society to have good relationship with your family, and if you were to break down any society into uh, details, uh, you see that the the society is composed of families and families of individuals. So if you were to fix the individual and fix the relationship between these individuals, then you have fixed the family. If you fix the family, then you fix the community. You fix the society. And that's it. So it, it, it comes like that. So we need to work on ourselves. So the Prophet Wasallam encouraged us to look after our families. So connect your blood ties. Connect your blood ties with all the challenges which we have, but we have to connect our blood ties. Okay. Even if it was a better relationship, but we try our best to make it work. We try, not with the first challenge, we just uh, drop our uh, weapons and, and run away from the, battlefield no we need to try again and again and, and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give us the strength and the power to rectify and to make it better relationship so he mentioned here Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the importance of connecting the blood ties which is another uh, principle which we have to stick to and apply. And the last thing he mentioned, Sallu Bil and the transformation here is about uh, your relationship with Allah, the emphasis on the relationship, secret relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. It means, let alone the, the obligatory prayers which everyone can see in the mosque, not these days of course. Uh, yeah, you have to have a special page between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So emphasizing the importance of our relationship with Allah Azza wa So we need to improve our relationship with Allah. Then, then the rest of the change can be easy. Although it's been mentioned last here that Salatul uh, Layl, you pray during the night whilst people are sleeping, but in in uh, priority is number one because from Allah Azza wa Jal, we get our power from Allah we get our inspiration from Allah we get our guidance from Allah we get our strength and power and he is the one who can support us and give us sabr and give us wisdom and so on so we need to have this good connection with Allah and then identify what's on the list next um, fixing the relationships uh, this Ramadan uh, fixing uh, our Salah uh, getting to know Allah more subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, having less ego we cannot get rid of ego 100% of course putting our ego under control if you want to be realistic uh, having more uh, humility which is a must for all of us so we need to work on this in order to do uh, any change or any difference in our life we, we need to work on these as a prophet وسلم, use these in uh, uh, tools if you want in mecca and in medina and this is my my observation. There are plenty of other things we can share, inshallah ta'ala, with you. But this is the top level uh, principles, which are probably mentioned many times to many of you. But inshallah ta'ala, I thought this is a good start to, to, to do this exercise with you. Inshallah, see how can we 
improve this and make it uh, more practical to improve ourselves and our families and our communities.